Welcome to Project Me, the podcast. I'm your host, Tiffany Carter, the founder of Project Me, multimillionaire entrepreneur, former TV newscaster, money-making expert, female empowerment speaker, and self-proclaimed office supply addict. My mission is to take the mystery out of making big money. Every week on Project Me, the podcast, I'll share success tips, strategies, and stories from other entrepreneurs, experts, and millionaires, showing you exactly how you can achieve your most exceptional life. Now let's get to it. Exciting announcement for all of my listeners. I've officially opened my exclusive group, the Project Me Passive Income Posse, to the public. This group is by application only, so we can keep the group high vibe and spend our time, energy, and expertise only helping those of you who truly want massive success and impact. You get live weekly trainings from me, special guest coaches, and direct access to me and my business partner for all of your questions. To learn more and apply, go to projectmewithtiffany.com, click on work with me and select Project Me Posse. And of course, any questions, feel free to DM me at Project Me with Tiffany. Welcome to the podcast and posse Project Me with Tiffany Carter. I'm your host, Tiffany. And today I put together a special episode for you guys. There's no shame in my game when it comes to sharing with you what mistakes I've made, what things I wish I'd done differently, things that I've done really well, because I would rather shave off time for you guys and make it easier for you to make the money you want to make with the business you want to create with the career that you want to be in. I want to make your journey faster, smoother, more fun. And the best way to do that is by learning from someone who has gone before you. And in my 12 years of being an entrepreneur, um, I have made more mistakes than I can count, but I've also had more wins than I can count. Specifically today, I want to talk about the five things I wish I did differently in starting Project Me with Tiffany Carter. Just to give you guys a refresher, truly the first year where I sold anything, had any true consistent offerings for Project Me was 2019. I did take clients in 2018, but there was no official launch. It was just that people were coming to me anyway. And so I was unofficially taking on clients. I hadn't officially put it out into the interwebs, so to speak, until 2019. So this business has already done incredibly well. We have netted $350,000 in that short period of time. And that's without having any digital courses yet which as you guys will soon learn, that is changing right now because I am in the launch mode for my Selling with Soul first signature course under the Project Me brand. So there'll be more on that later because I'm inviting you guys to a really amazing free training that I've never done before. This is a live training that's open to everyone in the world. And I'll share a little bit about that later because I want to make sure you guys have it down in your calendars so you don't miss it. So I'm giving you a little bit of advanced notice for my Project Me Posse listeners. All right, so let's start with these five things. The first thing that I wish I'd done differently is stop focusing on what everyone else is doing online. Oh, this boss babe's doing this. This, you know, this coach is doing that. I need, maybe I need to do this. Maybe I need to get professional pictures. Maybe I need to change my logo. Maybe I need to do this differently. Oh my God, they're doing this, that, and the other. And I'm like nowhere near at the capacity to be able to do all the things and all the time and all the stuff and everything, right? Even saying all that, I start getting stressed out. I was really focusing so much on what other people who had been doing it for years and who were successful, what they were doing and feeling like I had a, um, is it emulate? That's not the right word. I don't really care, but you guys, I'm sure will DM me and let me know. Love you. I felt like I had to, I guess, replicate might be a better word, replicate what they were doing if I wanted to be successful. 
um, just because I'd never created a personal brand before. My other business, my seven-figure business, that's not a personal brand. Although I have a high amount of referrals because people know me in the industry, uh, but my name and my picture are not the actual brand. So it is it is very, very different. I wish I didn't focus so much of that. I lost a lot of time, energy, stress, creativity. If I had just focused on what I want to do, that one person I want to serve, and what lights me up, what excites me, what feels right, focusing on my intuition, I would have saved myself a lot of time and energy. The second thing I wish I had done differently involves hiring. Wow, this needs to be a completely different episode, which I promised quite a few of you I would do on how to scale your business and when to scale and what to watch out for when hiring people. I have made a lot of mistakes (laughs) in a very short period of time. I thought because I already have a successful company and I have hired and fired I mean, hundreds of people, truly, throughout my career, I thought, you know, I have this down. I know what to look for. I know who to hire. You know, you always can get fooled. Someone can always surprise you, but I'm good at it. Well, that was for a certain business model, right? And a certain type of business. This personal branding business, this digital-based business, really, for the most part, it attracts different types of people, and it has a completely different vibe. And it requires different things to watch out for and different things to require when hiring. I had no idea. You know why I had no idea, you guys? Because I didn't ask a damn soul. You know, I always tell you guys, ask someone, ask an expert, DM me, ask me questions, right? Don't, not everything can be found out on Google University. Like find out from people who have the lifestyle, who have the level of success that you want and who have, you know, a teaching style, of course, that you resonate with and ask them, well, I didn't take my own advice. And I didn't ask. I didn't think I needed to ask. You know, understandably, I'm not beating myself up. But because I didn't ask, I made a lot of mistakes in hiring the wrong people, which cost me a lot of money, tears, time, frustration, all aggravation, all the freaking things. I mean, all of it and then some lost sleep. And it's funny because I started opening up to some of my, you know, peers in the online space, um, mostly because I was just needed someone to talk to. I mean, it was a total shit show. When you make bad hires and things happen, there's almost nothing that feels worse than your business. It feels like an invasion. This happened happened with my other business too, but it's just different when it's a personal brand. When your name and face are the company, it it hits harder to the heart, man. It hits it hits right to that gut. And when I started opening up to some of my peers, they're all like, "Oh yeah, you you shouldn't you can never hire someone who wants to have their own brand." Don't ever hire someone who lists themselves as lists themselves as a coach. Don't ever hire an influencer. I mean, they all started telling me all these things. These were all the things I actually did. And I just started laughing like if I had asked, um, I would have saved myself a lot of a lot of trouble, but I didn't know to ask. So that's why I'm telling you guys is make sure you talk to someone Um, and learn from someone who's done hiring in your industry, right, in your specific industry and where it is you want to go and grow. Not all hiring looks the same for different businesses or if you're pivoting, it does not look the same. Even if you've been a high level, you know, manager in a corporation and you've done a lot of hiring and firing and you're now looking at building an online business or something like that, uh, apples and oranges, totally freaking different. I mean, night and day. Oh, and also if you're a coach or you have your online brand, meaning you are, you are the brand, whatever it is under wellness, under fitness, under business, under mindset, whatever it is, do not hire someone else. Who's also a coach. Do not hire someone who wants to be Insta famous. 
and I'll do a separate episode on this on what to look for because it's not always obvious. Don't do it because their heart is not in serving you and building your personal brand. Their heart is in building their own and they're just using you for some temporary cash or maybe to ride on your coattails in order to build their own thing. And you don't want that energy in your business. So again, there'll be a separate episode. Don't worry. All right. Number three, I would have done this differently. I would have focused on pouring all of my love and my service and attention into one social media platform and then had been slowly building the others. Now, in essence, I did do that. Instagram is my main platform at Project Me with Tiffany. Come say hi, follow me, DM me, all the things. And I'm on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, LinkedIn, YouTube. I am on all those other things. And I really did and do pour my love, service, and support into Instagram. But my mindset had so much pressure from watching other people that I had to build up and be on all the things and like reading Gary Vaynerchuk's book and you have to be on all the things and all the time and all of it has to happen now and everything has to be 100%. And my like empath INFJ (laughs) side of me was very overwhelmed by all of this. And I ended up spending a lot of money on hiring videographers, editors, YouTube experts, all these people thinking I needed, you know, to hire all these people to help me build up all these channels. Because for me to be really successful, I have to build them up and I have to build them up now and they all have to look amazing. And the reality is my if my heart is not super jazzed and excited about a platform, it's not going to grow that well. It's just not. So I would say this, pick the platform that you genuinely spend time on that you love. Like where do you scroll? Or are you a Pinterest person? right? Where do you spend your personal time on? Not trying to build your audience, not trying to get followers or clients. Where do you spend your time on? I have a super affinity for Instagram. I genuinely love it. Therefore, I love spending time on it, replying to my DMs, creating fun Instagram stories for you guys, thinking of cool pieces of content, taking pictures and videos for, for of things that I know will help educate you guys, enlighten you guys, entertain you guys. I genuinely love it. And it shows. That's why it's grown so quickly. I do not have that same love for Facebook. But I do know that I need to have a presence on these other social media platforms. But I don't pour my brain power into them. I repurpose content. I have other people that help me make sure that my content is seen on all these other things. But more so mentally, I've let go of that pressure that I need to be on all the things. And now I need to have some Facebook group. And now I need to have this. I let go of the Facebook group thing a long time ago. The only Facebook group I have is my paid Project Me Posse membership. That is it. It's paid. It's not a free group. That would be adding another thing. And I don't spend time personally in Facebook groups. They get overwhelming to me. There are so many of them. So why would I have created some Facebook group that has thousands and thousands and thousands of people of it in it? If I don't love it myself, it wouldn't translate then it, because it's disingenuous. So focus on that one platform you love, pour your heart and soul into it. And then you can slowly, you know, build those other ones up and let go of the rest. If you freaking hate Facebook groups, don't make a Facebook group or find a way to make it that feels good to you. What felt good to me is to create a very intimate community, a more of a group coaching type experience where I go live every single week and bring on special experts inside of a paid membership only Facebook group. That got me excited, right? But what didn't get me excited were, you know, just another free group that has thousands and thousands of people that did nothing for me. So you can find a way to make something fun for you. And if you're like, girl, I freaking hate Facebook, period, or I hate Instagram, or I hate whatever, period, then you don't have to be on it. You don't. Give yourself that permission. You don't have to be. It won't make you a dime anyway if you don't have true excitement around it. All right, number four. I wish I had done this from day one of starting Project Me with Tiffany Carter. 
is started my email list growth. Now, technically, I did because when I had my website built for it, projectmewithtiffany.com, there is a welcome gift right when you land on the page. And if you haven't gotten that welcome gift, by the way, you're crazy because I poured a lot of time and attention into it. And it's my financial freedom e-guide. So you'll see it right when you land on the page. I also now have a quiz that's really cool. It's your money personality quiz that you can take at the top of the page too. So I did have a freebie available right from day one. I knew I knew that from being a digital marketer, but I didn't highly promote it. I didn't run any ad traffic to it. So I wish I poured more time and energy into growing my email list versus me stressing out about needing to have some YouTube channel and a Twitter and, and all these things. I All of that energy could have been spent in Um, nurturing an email list. Because remember, that's a community by itself. So now, of course, I have my secret posse. And I highly nurture and give my email list subscribers content that they can't get anywhere else. Plus, it's funny as shit. And we all need something funny in our email. There's enough boring stuff in there. But I'm now I'm finally, you know, now I'm now I'm doing that as of the end of 2019. But I wish I'd done that from the start and not wasted my time on all this other all this other bullshit. All right. The last one is don't overgive. I'm an overgiver by nature, which therefore like attracts like, as I always say, I attract a lot of clients and a lot of people in the posse, right, that are overgivers by nature. I tend to overgive more inside this personal brand, Project Me with Tiffany Carter, because my name's attached to it. This is my purpose. This is my baby. This is what I, this is one of the big things that I um, was, am, I'm on this earth to do, right? I love my other company. I'm grateful for it. But that wasn't my, that's not my soul calling, right? That's why I created Project Me with Tiffany Carter. But because it's my soul calling and I care so much and I'm not working with big companies per se. I'm working with individuals, heart-centered individuals that I care about you guys and I want the best for you guys and I want you to get the growth and I want you to have the financial freedom and I want you to have the success and the competence and the self-worth and I want all those things. I tend to overgive and I did this a lot in about my first eight months, I would say, of having Project Me. It wasn't out of a scarcity, which is why a lot of people do it. They feel they have to overgive because they don't feel like they're, you know, because they're charging a certain amount and they have to over deliver in order to justify what they're charging because there's a, you know, lack of self-worth in there. That was not my thing. Mine was more because I cared so much and I just felt like I should and it was the right thing to do. But then what happened is I ended up not being able to serve as many people because I'd be getting depleted and I would end up having to go like lay down after coaching calls or after, you know, booking myself at too many speaking events. Like too much of a good thing can turn into a bad thing is what I'm trying to say. Too much of a good thing can also create a a prison of a different kind. You can turn your passion and your purpose into a prison by overgiving. And I started down that path. Thankfully, I've done a lot of mindset work and I have a coach and I have other mentors that I talk to. So I have other people who are able to point things out to me that I was starting to replicate old patterns of creating a prison out of my love, out of my life's work from the fact of overgiving, from from me overgiving. So that is something I want to make sure you guys hear loud and clear because I know so many of you who are listening right now, you're overgivers, you're heart-centered, you're intuitives, you're empaths, you're highly sensitive people, beautiful people. But when we overgive, we actually can't help as many people. So it's a selfish act. And usually when we're overgiving, um, you know what, what happens is, is it, it doesn't always translate into the other person going, oh my God, Tiffany gave so much. There's some of that, but people don't necessarily appreciate when we overgive, right? And I'm sure you guys have seen that in relationships. It's like, they're, they're okay with you doing less. And I just said this to a client earlier, who's an over, a classic overgiver, and she is burnt out. And she's in the cycle of overgiving, overgiving, overgiving. 
And then she can't take it anymore. Then she has a breakdown. And then the whole thing starts all over again. And I said, 70% is good enough. Because when you're an overgiver, your 70% is someone else's 120%. So we've got to dial it back so that we have the reserves and the preserves to nurture ourselves to keep us at our highest vibration and energy and health so we can serve the most people. So it's actually selfish and short sighted and short minded when we overgive. I, I could go on, I could do a whole episode on this. I want you guys to really, really hear me. Okay. And one other thing I want you guys to do, you need to set your calendars because next week there are only going to be two live trainings where I am going to be teaching you the three critical mistakes entrepreneurs make on sales calls that cause them to lose clients and money. I have not taught this anywhere else. I am only teaching this live twice next week and you have to be registered. And because we're doing it on a webinar platform, there is a limited number of seats. It truly is capped. So I want to make sure that you guys get in. I did two different times because I understand there's people in all different time zones. So where I need you to go, the easiest way would be to go on my Instagram at Project Me with Tiffany and the link will be in my bio and I'll be talking about it at nauseum. The other way is for you to make sure you are made aware of this and you can get in to one of these trainings. And by the way, I'm giving away to each person who attends the trainings. You're getting a gift valued at $497 just for attending the training by itself. So it's insane to not to not participate in this training. This is this is where overgiving is a good thing because I want you guys to freaking make the money you deserve to be making in 2020. Like enough's enough already. And I can't handle seeing these mistakes that I see repeatedly over and over and over again. I can't handle it. And I'm not judging you guys. You just don't know what you don't know. And I need to teach you the three main critical mistakes that you guys are making that's costing you a shit ton of cash, regardless of what industry you're in. Network marketing, you could be in wellness, you could be in beauty, you could be in fashion, you can be an influencer, you could be a mindset coach, you can be in business, Reiki, I don't give a shit what you do. I see this over and over and over again. Um, the other way that you can get first access to make sure you can register for these two live trainings next week is to make sure you sign up to be in my secret posse. The e easiest way to tell you guys how to do that is go to projectmewithtiffany.com projectmewithtiffany.com. And right when you it opens up, you can either download my free welcome gift or you can take my free money personality quiz. Either one will automatically put you into the secret posse and you'll get emailed about those registration times and the link to register for this free live training next week. I'm so excited to see you guys there. I can't wait to get you guys on a path where you can for sure increase how much you're making just by stopping yourself from doing these three things. Can't wait to share you this, share this with you guys. Anyway, I'm talking on and on. All right. I will see you guys on the training and I will talk to you soon. Wishing you great health, wealth, and worth as always. Love you guys. If you enjoyed this podcast, please write a five-star review on iTunes. Not only will this make me super happy, but it will allow more listeners to find our special show. Simply help me help others.